Hey there, hope you're well. Today let's take a look at the top roughly 10 Python libraries for DevOps. When I say libraries, uh, you can also say packages or, or modules. Now, uh, I may not cover all of them, but I just want to focus on ones that I think are especially good for DevOps. You may have your favorite that I didn't cover, so you know, apologies if you don't see that. Also, some of these are part of the standard library, and where that's the case, I'm going to use a, an asterisk or a star, okay? So you will see what I'm talking about. Let's get straight into this. Now, the first one is Boto3, which is one of the most popular in the PyPy package repository and this is basically the software development kit for AWS so AWS have SDKs for all the popular programming languages and the one that they make for Python the package is called Boto3 and that also includes something called Boto Core which you may see sometimes in other people's source code uh, there are other ones for Azure and GCP I didn't mention them here but basically in Azure and GCP they take a different approach they have lots of different libraries each for each different service so one library per service so that's why you may never have heard of them because they tend to only do quite a specific thing but the approach is is different I don't know if it's better or worse but I just mentioned here that in this case Boto3 you see it everywhere it's super popular now next, uh, a few in a group I put. The first two are similar. One is for handling JSON, that's part of the standard library. Another is for handling YAML, and there's a few, but this is the most popular, PyYAML. This is an external package. And yeah, they do similar things, so they handle JSON and YAML, which in, you should know, I guess already, in DevOps is super common task whether you're calling an API for JSON for example or uh, YAML you may see this in many different things such as Kubernetes so just a couple of examples uh, use cases there now we've got this module here called I don't know how to pronounce it re or rare but it's basically used for regex so if you're not familiar regex has been around since early Linux days it's for searching and changing through doing pattern matching and uh, please take a look at regex google it if you're not familiar with it this is a super useful library that's often used in DevOps next you've got a couple of libraries that basically do the same thing these are very similar you got URL lib3 and requests now there's actually a URL lib that's a standard part of the standard library but really you should be using these external library URL lib3 or requests and yeah they're both HTTP libraries well what do I mean by that you use these to make an API call so very similar to using something like curl in Linux and yeah these are very very similar difficult to say which one is better there's some very isolated edge cases that you might be forced to use one over the other but otherwise it's really most of the time a matter of personal preference or indeed the preference of the company that you're working at I would just uh, go with convention and, and stick with whatever they're using already that way everyone can read each other's code more easily now you've got a few very useful uh, libraries here the first one is argpass so if you are making a script that is going to be executed on the command line whether by person or even in a pipeline but the script is going to be accepting arguments then there's a few ways of handling arguments but by far the best way most popular way is to use this library argpass just use it it just make your life easier you got logging now there's a uh, my slide is incorrect there should be a, an asterisk here to say that this is part of the standard library so Python has built-in uh, handling of logging. This is a great library. I uh, can strongly recommend it. Cryptography is a library for handling just what it says. Cryptography. Now, what are you going to use this for? You know, you're not going to use this for creating your own password manager or anything crazy like that. There's a simple reason why this is super useful for DevOps, and that is because it can handle X509 certificates. So you will be handling certificates in DevOps and there's a few modules that can do that but in general this is a pretty middle-of-the-road decent library that can handle that and I can recommend it now I got a group here of similar related libraries the first three are all part of the standard library OS sys and subprocess and I put some notes here but basically 
they're all kind of handling similar things on the local machine files, processes, environment variables, the runtime environment, spawning new processes, shell commands, that type of thing. PSUtil is external and it's a little bit different. It's good for getting information about the local system, especially the hardware, the CPU, disk, memory, network, etc. So yeah, super useful. And finally, there's a group here that you may not have a use for, or you may have a strong use for. So there's two here that are, I've never used them, but I understand that they work kind of slightly differently, but they pretty much do the same thing, and they're about running SSH. Uh, so getting into a remote machine and running commands remotely. You've got Ansible, which is self-explanatory. If you're using Ansible and you want to do things in a programmatic way, then there is a library available for that. And similarly for Jenkins, if you are using this as your CI CD solution and you want programmatic access, then there's actually more libraries than this, but these are the two that came up a lot. I haven't used either, but I understand these are the two most popular now. I think one was updated last year and one was updated this year, so I'm not going to vouch for either of them, but Jenkins API and Python Jenkins appear to be the two most popular libraries for using Jenkins. So I hope you found that list of libraries interesting. Uh, look, we're still growing, but we're doing really well. We've got about 30 videos at the moment and 18 subscribers. So please help us grow. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe to the channel for more like this. And I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.